Firstly, for this tutorial, I'm just going to introduce you to uh, another small piece of kit that's uh, a really handy thing to have if you haven't got one. Um, quite a few people have got one already. If not, then you know it's. I'd recommend you go out to your local DIY shop and just pick one up. And it's called a boat level. And the reason why it's called a boat level is because it's shaped a little bit like a boat. If you can see that. Uh, now, if you if you are buying one, or you've already got one. You can check the accuracy of these really easily. And all you do is you place it down onto a level surface like so. Check that your bubble's in the middle, meaning you are on a level surface. And then take your, your level and turn it through 180 degrees and place it back down again. If your bubble is still in the middle, it means that your level is, is reasonably accurate. Um, now why am I showing you this? Well, because these are actually quite handy for uh, a couple of things to do with setting your mount up. Which I'm going to cover uh, in a minute or two. So we're back with you shortly. Right, obviously the first use for your boat level is for levelling your actual tripod. Um, and when you're doing that, you just need to go, uh, take two measurements at 90 degrees to each other uh, and make sure that your mount's nice and level. Now, the thing is, I know that quite a lot of mounts come with a bubble level already built in. The fact of the matter is that they're not always that accurate. Uh, and what you can do and what some people have successfully done is to prise out the bubble that's already in the mount level it everything up using a, a different level like this and then re-gluing the bubble in so that it is reading exactly right um, although there is quite a bit of talk now that it's not that important to have your, have your mount exactly level um, so you know take your choice really but that's the first use for it. Uh, next one, we're going to show you quite a clever use for one of these uh, with regards to setting your mount up, and um, that's coming next. Right, we've now got the head on the mount, uh, as you can see. Uh, the Christmas tree is completely optional. Uh, you don't need one of those, uh, except if it's Christmas, then it's, it's recommended. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to different parts of the mount as we, as we talk about each one and use it uh, for this tutorial. Uh, and, and what I'm going to draw your attention to now is the right ascension setting circle which is that particular piece of equipment there and um, we'll just take a look a closer look at that okay we're in close up now on the ra setting circle the right ascension setting circle this is technically a clock uh, it starts off at zero which is midnight and it goes one two three all the way around 23 and then zero again now on a few tutorials you might see where it says use the bottom scale or use the top scale uh, ignore that advice because Skywatcher in the infinite wisdom have actually produced a couple of different variations on these some are on the top, some are on the bottom uh, now the way to tell which one you should be using is, is dead easy if you look on your circle you look at the times like one, two, three and if it's going round in a clockwise direction that's the one you want to be using so your clock is clockwise um, is an easy way to remember it. That's for the northern hemisphere. So on mine, it's actually the the top scale, uh, and I've seen some tutorials where it says use the bottom scale, which obviously it isn't. Um, and it's got a couple of lock nuts on on this scale uh, for locking it up. Now I actually wish there were two of these. They're a very neglected sort of addition to a mount. These a lot of people they sort of frighten a lot of people. Um, I wish there were two, and I'll show you a reason why. Because there's a couple of really really good tricks that you can do with these. Um, and we'll go on to that next, but that's your familiarity there with the uh, with the RA setting circle. Right, we're back again to uh, the head, and um, first thing is all the textbooks will tell you about setting the home position on your mount, which should be that your telescope is going straight up and down in this direction, and that your weight bar should be pointing straight at the ground this way. The thing is, how can you tell if your mount is exactly in the home position? You know, if you're like, same thing, it's the, it's the OCD striking again. Um, well, this is how I'm going to show you. We need our little friend the boat level, and what we do is loosen off the RA, rotate the mount, and put the boat level onto your weight bar. And then rotate until you get your bubble exactly in the middle so that you know now that that is level on the horizontal plane and lock up your mount like so now the next thing that you do is you take your setting circle and you turn your setting circle until it says 
18, which would be 6 o'clock. So we set it at 18 and lock at that point. Once we've locked at that point, if you then release your RA and move back down again, you will actually be exactly in the RA home position when you set that setting circle to zero. Now you're exact in that in that plane. Next we'll cover bringing this one into, into the home position. But that now is exactly the way it should be for a perfect home position. Right, next we're going to deal with the, uh, the declination setting. Now for that one, all you need to do is to place your level into your puck like so and release your declination lock and rotate until you've got your bubble exactly in the middle again and again lock it up now then on your declination setting circle rotate that until you see 90 so like so and lock it up once you've locked it if you then release your declination and twist until your setting circle reads zero you now know that that is exactly in again and will fit in with your home position um, so you know that's it you can bear that little bit of info in mind uh, for setting up as regards to your home position um, I'm going to show you another little trick next with regards to your RA setting circle and we'll cover that in a moment Right, I'm going to show you next how to get an almost perfect polar alignment uh, by using your right ascension and your right ascension clock um, which we covered earlier Now, what happens is, as you rotate your mount in, in right ascension, like so you're actually also rotating the reticule in your polar scope now what you want to do is this is you can do this sort of in your living room as, as preparation and I'm actually going to have to cover this part in a couple of little stages um, as I flip from one part to the other but the first thing that you need to do is in your living room just get yourself on your hands and knees and rotate in right ascension until the little polaris in your reticule in your polar scope is exactly at the bottom of its orbit because you get sort of a large circle which shows the Polaris orbit and you get a small circle which is actually meant to represent Polaris itself so we need that right at the very bottom of that circle once you've got it there lock your right ascension on your mount and then turn your setting circle loosen your setting circle off and rotate your setting circle to exactly on zero and I'll show you why in, in just a moment. Right, we've never lined our mount so that using the RA, the, the, the reticule is now showing Polaris in transit, which is right at the bottom of the reticule in your polar scope. And we've set the clock on the, on the RA scale clock to zero and locked that up. Now next we need a little piece of information, which is when Polaris was last at transit. Now by far the easiest way is if you've got one of these uh, SynScan controller and once you've put in all your details which I'm just going to flick through all the settings until I get to the, the screen that I want which is that one when, once you've set up you'll see this displayed now the HA is actually the last time that Polaris was in transit which was 23 hours and 25 minutes ago so in other words in 35 minutes it'll be at transit again but now we've got that time 23 and it's now gone to 26 that so it's 23 26 remember those figures because what we do next is remember how we said that the setting circle is a clock we now rotate until that clock reads 23 26 and we'll take that in close up for you to just show you exactly how you do that Right, we're back in close up on the on the setting circle, uh, which as I said before, if you remember, it's a clock. Um, just always think of it as a clock. So the time that we were given since last transit was 23.25, uh, um, boring on 26. 
So what we do is 23 is obviously 2300 hours. The marker there in the middle is 2330. So if we go just before it, like so, and then lock up our mount. When you look through your polar scope now, the little outline of Polaris in the orbit is going to be right in the place where it needs to be. Um, so then you just obviously to polar align, set up your uh, your Alton deck to, to get it bang into that tiny little circle. And I believe that is probably the most precise method of, of aligning your, your, your mount just using your polar scope without drift aligning or anything. And it is very, very accurate. If you, you, know, if you want to try it out at home and have a little practice and then go to your computer and print out um, something from Polar Finder, you know, one of the, one of the printouts from Polar Finder and compare it and you'll see that it's exactly right. If you find that it's on the opposite side of where it should be, it means that you've read your scale the wrong way around. You're using Australian time instead of British. Um, now, to find that period of time that Polaris last transited, uh, in other words, when it transited in that day, because it transits once every 24 hours, there's various websites that you can look at, but also you can fire Polar Finder up and you can mess about with the times in the setup and eventually you'll find the time that Polaris actually transited for that day for you and just make a note of it and you can do it that way. But like I said, I think this is probably the most precise method of, of just using your polar scope and your mount to, to line up. Uh, other than that, you're going to be on drift aligning, which we'll cover in, a, in another tutorial at another time. But I hope that's helped you out again. And um, once again, thanks for watching.